Okay, so just tell me a little bit about why you've chosen to run for school board. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a Jacksonville native. I went through Pocatuwa County Public Schools myself. Um, I have three kids, one of which graduated. I have a third grader and I have a little one who will start kindergarten next school year. So for me, when I look at the trajectory of just my family in public schools, I want to ensure that the public school system they're part of is you know, the best that it possibly can be. And right now in our county, we're facing you know, a lot of challenges, first and foremost, our, our budget problems. And I think that our school board needs you know, a diverse set of skills to tackle these problems. And so I think that my set of skills, being a bankruptcy and real estate attorney and having you know, leadership experience on governing boards is very beneficial and is a skill that our school board could need right now. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, obviously running for school board, I, like you're saying, there's a lot of issues. Um, talking about your background, you said you're a bankruptcy lawyer and, and what was the other thing too? Real estate. Real estate. Mm -hmm. Um, so just kind of talk about like your, your background as a lawyer mm -hmm. and why you think that would be beneficial to the school board. Yeah, of course. Um, so one of the main things with the school board is number one, we handle all of the properties that the district owns, all of the contracts related to those properties, all of the contracts related to you know the maintenance and the facilities of those. So I'm very familiar with you know contracts and real estate and how to negotiate those contracts and also what to look out for. What are we taking into account? What are we not taking into account? A lot of our sort of bidding processes are not ideal, and I think that there's a lot that we can do to make those a lot better. On the bankruptcy side of things, I you know really help individuals and families when they're having financial difficulties. Our district is having some financial difficulties right now. And so within the school board, one of the things they're responsible for is the budget, is determining where are we allocating our money, how are we allocating our money, where can we reduce our expenditures to bring them in line with our revenues, and also trying to determine how can we increase our revenues given the streams of income that we currently have. So the streams of income with the school board has been a bit limited because of changes that have happened in Tallahassee, but where we can increase revenues is by really looking at enrollment and trying to encourage you know, retention of students that we have in our system and also to encourage more students to enroll in public schools because we have a lot of programs that are really great. Gotcha. Um, so when we're talking about you know running for school board, if you're elected, what what are your, some of the things that you're hoping to do, and what what does your platform look like? Yeah, absolutely. So there's sort of three main points to my platform. Number one is really the fiscal responsibility of our school board district budget, and so what that involves is really looking at our budget, identifying where waste is occurring. Are we spending money on things we shouldn't be spending money on? Are there ways we can be spending our money better? Can we be using our spaces better? Um, and just really identifying how we can make our budget better for everybody, you know, not just students and teachers, but taxpayers, because these are our dollars that are funding these schools. Um, the second part of my platform is really retaining and supporting our educators because they are, you know, the bedrock of our public education system. So if we are not supporting them and uplifting them, that just flows through to our students. So not just paying them more money, which yes, they deserve a lot more money, but also providing them you know, support and resources and better benefits than they're receiving right now. Um, the third point of my platform is prioritizing the safety and security of our students. And that is not just keeping outside threats out of school and ensuring that our students are safe because those are my kids in that building and everybody's kids and we wanna make sure that they're okay. But also when we look at student safety, it is mental health and ensuring that there is adequate access to mental health resources to our students and also ensuring that when there are disciplinary problems that we are not only dealing with them in an appropriate manner but also working with the student and their family to figure out why is the student having these problems what resources are there that can help them you know overcome whatever problems they may be having gotcha and then i know you talked a lot about retention and, and the struggles that the district has been dealing with. I, I mean, I've talked with parents who um, are concerned about the school vouchers and, and things of that nature and, and kind of point the finger that, you know, the, the charter schools and the vouchers and, and things of that nature are, are why we've lost so many students and, and why our, our budget is looking the way that it is. Mm -hmm. um, what is your stance on vouchers and, and how are you hoping to um, increase the amount of students that come to do yeah. kind of schools. So I think that every parent, you know, deserves the right to make whatever choice they want for their child's education. As a parent, you know, you know your child better, you know, than any school, 
than any teacher would. You know how they like to learn, what excites them, what motivates them. So you are going to make the decisions that are best for your child. When a school district is looking at, you know, how many choices there are out there, and there's a lot. Our job as a school district should be to make sure that our neighborhood schools are the top choice. And if they're not, why is that? Is it because other schools have programs that we don't? Is it because we've lost confidence of some people in our community as far as the quality of our schools? And so I think really when we're looking at you know, choice and vouchers, it puts the burden back on the school district to say, hey, you know, are we failing our families in some way? How can we do better? What programs do they want that are attractive to them? Um, you know, what resources are being provided elsewhere that we could provide here? So, you know, I think with, with vouchers, our job as a school board should be to really advocate and educate because those decisions are made in Tallahassee. The school board doesn't have a voice there, but where we do have a voice is making relationships with the folks in our Duval delegation who do represent us in Tallahassee and ensure that they know what are the issues we're having here, what is important, what do we need, and having them be our voice in Tallahassee because that's what they're elected to do and try and bring more of those dollars back to Duval. Gotcha. Um, and you know, you're talking about neighborhood schools. Yep. Um, it's been in the news for months and we've been talking with parents for months about potential school closures. I know there's 30 schools that are on the chopping block. I've seen that there's been a revised plan, um, you know, potentially that, that they might be looking at, but there's a lot of great schools that are on the chopping block and just a lot of neighborhood schools in general that are on the chopping block. Yeah. Um, if you're elected, how are you hoping to tackle that proposed master facilities plan. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's important to note with the district I'm running in, District 7, there are no proposed closures or consolidations in our district. We have 10 you know, Duval County traditional neighborhood schools in our district, and they're all amazing schools and well utilized, and none of them are on this chopping block. But as a member of the school board, you know, you're one of seven that has a vote, and your responsibility is to all you know, taxpayers and children in Duval County. And so when we're looking at these master facility plan changes, I think what's really important is to really hear the community and listen to them. And that has really been evident through this process is there have been so many parents and so many community, you know, community members who have come out and said, hey, this is why we love our school. This is why it's important to us. Here are the things that they're doing that people may not even know about. So I think that the school board one should be making visits to these schools, ensuring that they really have a full understanding of what that school means to that community, what does it offer that maybe other schools don't, what would it mean for a family to have their child who walks to school to have to get on a bus and go to a school miles away. And so it really, I think, means, number one, we need to be talking to and listening to our community members. We need to be making visits to those schools personally to see, you know, what are they offering, what does it look like here, how is the space being used. And then using that information and ensuring that everybody has a place at the table, not just the community members, but the teachers in that school, community partners who may provide services at that school, and really have a fruitful discussion with everybody before any decisions are made to close or consolidate a school. Gotcha. Um, is there anything I've missed just about running for school board or you know your platform that or the master facilities plan um, that you think is important for people to know about your run for school board? Uh, I think the most important thing to know right now is that early voting started today um, on August 7th and it is open until August 18th and from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. for early voting and then election day is on August 20th and if anybody has any questions my website is sarahforschoolboard7.com and they can always reach out there with any questions or concerns or just view more information about our platform. Gotcha.